Hello and welcome to Community Conversation, a show that's for and about the people who live in Reading. My name is Kevin Vent, and I'm going to be your host for this show. Recently, we had Matt Cronellis in studio with us. He's the new Director of Administrative Services for the Town of Reading. After that, we'll have Irene Collins, the Executive Director of the Reading YMCA. Let's listen in on our conversation with Matt now. Hello and welcome. I'm here with Matt Cronellis, who is the new administrator, Director of Town Administrative Services. Close enough. Okay, <laughs> for the Town of Reading. Um, and he has uh, uh, so many job functions that I couldn't even read them all on TV. But anyway, we're, we're glad you're here today, Matt, to share with us a little bit about yourself. Sure. As people get to know you here in town, just a little bit about what some of your function is and how right. you're serving uh, the people of the Town of Reading. Sure. So, kind of starting off, Matt, kind of from whence do you come? How, do you, how did you come to the town of Reading? Right, I'll, I'll tell you the whole story, but first of all, I'm really happy to be here, Kevin. All right. Thanks a lot for having me on, and I'm really uh, anxious to talk to the people of Reading and meet more people in Reading. Sure. And I'm actually from Methuen, which isn't okay. too far away, you yep. know, right up 93, about a half hour away. Um, I've been in government about 16 years. I, okay. I started off as a city councilor myself mm -hmm. in the city of Methuen. Um, from there, I went to the state of Massachusetts. I'm, I'm a lawyer. I worked as a government lawyer okay. for the state. I came back to the city of Methuen and served as the mayor's chief of staff for six years. Oh, all right. And that's where I really got the nuts and bolts government mm -hmm. experience. Um, Especially in the local level. And the really, local yeah. level that's really helping me here in Reading. Um, after that, after the mayor's term was over in Methuen, I went back to the state and I was the deputy chief of staff at the Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation, okay. which is a mouthful, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, where I dealt with mostly consumer issues mm -hmm. um, in insurance, banking, sure. professional licensure, that all came under me at the state. All right. um, and worked right in Boston, I was at the State House all the time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and finally the, f the commute from Methuen to Boston kind of got to me a little bit. And I really did miss municipal, municipal work okay. in, in working for a municipality. There's a lot you can get done there. You're really sure. out there where the rubber meets the road. <clears throat> so I was looking to get back into the area and back into municipal government. All right. And I saw the posting in Reading, and it, it seemed to be right up my alley. Um, all of my skills were covered there. Okay. And I'd heard a lot of good things about Reading. So I came, I applied, and I got the job, and I've been here about four months. All right, so it's really great that you have this kind of wide breadth of experience and in sure. government, both at the state level and at the local level, and kind of bring all of that to the town of Reading at this time. Sure, yeah, and that serves me well every day in my legal background as well. Yeah. Um, I, I went, um, just going back even further, I graduated from Methuen High School. I then went to Merrimack College, okay. uh, which is, again, local college. So really stayed local the entire stayed time. Stayed local. <laughs> um, I, I got a degree in English mm -hmm. in a minor in political science from Merrimack College. And from there, I went to Suffolk Law School in Boston. Okay. So all of my experience is really, you know, sure. Boston North. Sure. Um, so. so, you know, whether or not I got your title right, Director of Administrative so Services. The, so the title is Director of Administrative Services. Okay. Um, also in that title is the function of what they call ombudsman. Oh, um, okay. And that's actually something in the town charter where the town manager has to appoint somebody um, usually on his staff or mm -hmm. department head as the okay. ombudsman between the town, the town people, and the, the town government. And what is the function of an ombudsman? So that, that's a, a pretty broad function. It basically, and, and I've, I've learned this over the four months I've been there, anybody that has any issue with the town, it doesn't have to come under the departments that I d directly supervise, okay. but you might have an issue with police or DPW or a tax issue or, or an issue with the town clerk, mm -hmm. um, a lot of those people come directly to me. Okay. And I know who to, to go to and get the answers. I okay. can set up meetings. Um, most of the times I could sort of get the answer myself and work on it myself. Mm -hmm. um, and that even extends beyond town government. I've had people call me that they've had issues with um, utilities, for example. Okay. And I know the government relations people at certain utilities and I'll mm -hmm. try to get their issues solved. Also state government, where I have a background, um, and I, I deal with state issues. If people have an okay. issue with the state, I know where to plug them in. Right. And even federal issues, working with uh, Congressman Wilson's really? office. Okay. Yeah, so really, it's, it's, a, it's a liaison between the people and the government in some in Exactly, some way. yeah, exactly um, right. So it's a liaison between the people and the government. And when I was in the mayor's office in Methuen, I did exactly the same function. Okay. Um, so now, in, in Methuen's actually a little larger city than Reading, so mm -hmm. it's on a little bit of a smaller scale, but they've been keeping me busy, that's for okay. sure. Okay. <laughs> what kinds of things have people brought up? Nothing, um, no, nothing specific. Yeah, a lot of, you know, mo most recently, a lot of the things that have come up, and, and we're filming this obviously in the summer months, um, and everybody knows there's a lot of construction going on right. in the town. 
Um, so people, some people, even though they know it's for the better, that they're having the roads sure. fixed and whatnot, it's difficult to get around town these days. Mm -hmm. um, so they may have some issues regarding detours on their road, okay. um, some roads that they feel weren't done or not done right. properly that I can have engineers look at, go back, sure. fix. Um, so a lot this summer there's been a lot of those issues. But yeah. also we've had issues that you know come up. City clerk, uh, town clerk comes under me. Uh, at, at Reading, and there could be some issues with, you know, even dog tickets okay. <laughs> that come out. I've gotten some calls, yep. some calls on that. Um, I've gotten some calls on utilities. Um, the people are having problems with a certain utility in okay. town, and I've been able to manage those issues for them. And okay. and I think at this point, I've probably dealt with issues from about all of the departments. That, wow! Uh, in handled, just yeah, in that short in just of time. four months, yeah, because there are things that come under community development and mm -hmm. those boards and, and zoning, whatnot. Yeah. Um, there are things that come up under my own departments that I oversee, mm -hmm. and then of course, police, fire, DPW are very active. Sure, so, sure, yeah, sure. So, that's what so it really is a role where kind of where the, where the rubber meets the road for a lot of people. That for you sure. are kind of the the, the go-to guy when it comes yes. to there's an issue or a problem, or I just want to make a suggestion about something. Yeah, and, and even that, some people just want to call and, and have their voice heard. Sure. And I'll I'll get that message to the proper person. So. Right. And right. I've had, um, I've, I've also helped the selectmen out as well. I've had selectmen call me on okay. constitu constituent issues, what we call All them, right. and, and I'll handle that for the selectmen as well and obviously for the town manager. So if someone wanted to contact you in that role, right. how would they get a hold of you in town hall? Well, they can call me. They could, first of all, you can come by town hall, sure. and if I'm not in a meeting or whatnot, um, I, I'll, I'll try to meet with them on the spot. So if you're familiar with town hall, the town clerk's office is where I'm located in the back. Okay. So you go to the town, the window of mm -hmm. the town hall mm -hmm. um, of the town clerk and you ask for me if I'm available, I'll come meet with you. Sure. If not, then I'll, you know, I ask them to take a name and number and I'll get back to them. Okay. But I also have email um, with the town. I also have a phone number. I can give you that information. Maybe you can put a Chiron up yeah, at yeah. the end, you know, yeah, with that absolutely. information on there. Um, so the people contact me many different ways. Some people prefer to come and meet with me in person. Sure. Sometimes they'll just email me. Sometimes I'll get a phone call. Sometimes I'm at a community event and they'll approach me with an issue, and sure. that's fine too. Absolutely. You know, that's that's part of my job. So any way that they want. In social media is something we want to do a little bit more okay. of too. Okay. Okay. So. so I mean, to me, that sounds like a full-time job just <laughs> doing that. But I know yeah. that you supervise several departments also. Yes, in the I town. do. So yeah. So in addition, you know, like, like in any town, you know, we try to multitask and do different things. So under me, under administrative services, I have the town clerk's office, which mm -hmm. I oversee, um, human uh, HR, human okay. resources, which is uh, in a lot of, there's a lot of legal issues and as, sure. as you know, come out of there. So that's a, a pretty- And uh, is that just the town or is that the, the school side also? That's uh, mostly the town, mostly but the town we've side. had some meetings with the school. We okay. try to get some synergies together with the school department mm -hmm. when we can. Um, but mostly um, with all the postings and whatnot we've been doing lately, it's okay. mostly been on the town side. All right. So we have those two departments. Also, we have what's what they call operations. It's mostly procurement, procurement and purchasing. Okay. Um, so those business functions come under me as well, mm -hmm. and then technology comes under administrative services as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole IT function. Right. Um, and then I also have some of the the town man. The way they're structured is like the town manager's office actually falls under administrative services. Okay. So mostly what I do for the town manager's office is the, the ombudsman function, the mm -hmm. constituent issues, and also communications. Okay. I'll deal with the press, write press releases, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, I deal with that on a, on a regular basis as well and, and help oversee staff in the town manager's mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. So there's five departments that comprise my larger department. Wow. So wow. there's a lot going on there. So, so really in <coughs> a lot of ways you're, you're handling communications for town hall also exactly. to, to yeah. the public in general. Yeah. Uh, yep. what, what types of things have you done to kind of help yeah. foster so communication? Yeah, that's one of my, and that's one of the things I really enjoy working on and I've done that in the past in both in Methuen and for the mm -hmm. state. Um, but a lot of times, you know, first of all, just writing press releases, getting the word out through press release to the newspapers, and the newspapers have been great about covering issues that we sure. have in town hall. Okay. Um, also getting things on the website, you know, information on the website for communications. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to do more with social media there because a lot okay. of towns are doing more with social media, and that's something that it's coming along. We're actually al also looking at updating our website again okay. um, to make that a little more user friendly. Mm -hmm. So anything that comes down to writing, communicating, dealing with the press, like we had an issue um, in town about a month ago where there was a gas leak that you know, okay, they were right. digging Main Street and they hit yeah. a gas. All of a sudden, all the media is <laughs> gathered <laughs> around. So I had to talk to Channel 5, Channel okay. 7, you know, that, that sort of thing. So anything dealing with communications, media relations, all right. I do as well. Well, that, that's interesting. Like I said, it sounds like an awful lot that you have 
uh, going it, on your plate. What have you found is. to be kind of the, the most challenging thing thus far in your first couple of months? Um, well, I mean, I, I think, you know, juggling all, all those things is, is uh, doable but could be difficult sometimes. I try to prioritize the ombudsman function because okay. I really want to put the, the residents first. Sure. So I may be in the middle of meetings or doing some research on an HR issue or a legal mm -hmm. issue or something, and somebody may come with, to me with a totally different issue. Then right. I'm going to have to switch gears and handle their issue, prioritize their sure. issue, get them the answer and mm -hmm. whatnot. So mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of juggling, but it's something I'm used to anyway. Uh, but I, probably that might be the, the most... Um, the most stressful thing so far is because you really want to. I, I yeah. have a really aggressive agenda, and I want to get things done. Sure. The town manager expects me to do that, and then you get pulled away on different things. But um, so far, I've been I've been keeping up with it. So <laughs> good. Hopefully good. that continues. Kind of the flip side of that question is, mm -hmm. is kind of what's been the most fun thus far for you? And, um, and you know what? I, and I wanted to bring this up too. I, I also, in my background, um, I've worked a lot with cultural groups and arts groups, and okay. there's a group forming here in Reading. Um, called, they called themselves CCR, Cultural Connections Reading. Yep. And I'm one of the liaisons between the town and that committee, and I've been mm -hmm. going to a lot of their meetings. They had, um, they had a nice display at the garden show back in May, okay. and they're also going to be at the Stra Fall Street Fair. Mm -hmm. And so I've done a lot of that. I'm actually on the Cultural Council in Methuen myself okay. and work a lot with the library up there. We started a poetry group in Methuen. Mm -hmm. So that kind of arts and culture, th which is, again, part of my job, a little bit part of my job, I really enjoy that quite a bit. Mm. Um, and that's something that... Um, you know, it, it, it's a little different than working on a, a, a town clerk issue or right. an HR issue, right. you know, right. it's, you know, but I, I feel like uh, Reading has a lot going for it in terms of cultural yeah. connections, yeah. and we can really make a difference in the cultural economy sure. and creative sure. economy. Well, that sounds uh, interesting. I'm glad to have uh, yeah. someone comes with your your depth of experience come, coming along and, and helping yeah. us out here in town. Yes, no, I'm happy uh, to be you here. Know, in, in I guess in the in interest of full disclosure, one of the things you also oversee is the town's relationship with RCTV. Yes, that's and I know true. You're, you're just getting uh, <laughs> getting involved with that and seeing yeah. what that's all about. But you have yeah. some some background in television. Yeah, as well. I have some background in television in um, in Methuen and with the state. Um, and you know, one of the first things I did, uh, I think, was my first week actually. I, I called Phil, the director here, and I said sure. I'd like to come by and talk. I'd like to see the facility. Yeah. And and I'll tell you, I was floored when I got here because this is a great facility here. You're <laughs> very lucky to have this. Uh, yeah. Citizens out there, very lucky because I've been in some places where it's just a, it's just somewhere in the high school, almost like a closet in the high school. Right, right. That's a TV studio, but yeah. this is uh, really state of the art. So you should be proud of that. Well, we look forward to working with you, and we yeah. do thank you for coming on the show today thank and sharing you for having a little bit. Me. We'd like to have you come again sometime. I, would, I would love to. As talk about progress. what's going on yeah. and, and, and all of that. We've been talking with uh, Matt Cronellis, who is the Director of Administrative Services, the new Director of Administrative Services for the Town of Reading. You have been watching Community Connect Conversation on yeah. RCTV. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Community Conversation. Next up, we have Irene Collins, the Executive Director of the Burbank YMCA here in Reading. 
Well, hello and welcome. We are here with Irene Collins, who is the Executive Director of the Burbank YMCA here in Reading. Welcome, Irene. Hi, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for being here today. Appreciate you taking the time to come and chat with us a little bit about the Y. Yeah, of course. Thank you. <laughs> I know you've been at the Y for about three years, yep, and uh, it's been three. a very eventful three years, I'm sure. <laughs> Never a dull moment. That's no. what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to talk about the Y because a lot of people do think of the Y solely as a place to go to work out, you know, with health and fitness right. or maybe a place to take their children for swim lessons. And right. while those are excellent things that the Y is there for, the Y is really a whole lot more than, than just health and fitness and swimming. That's um, right. We're a nonprofit organization and we're the largest social services service agency in the community. Mm -hmm. So what that means is we never turn anyone away for the inability to pay. We like to um, strengthen the community the best way that we can. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just about like you said, health and wellness, you know, a gym and swim, right. we really try to look at ways that we're impacting the community um, as a whole. And what are some examples of that beyond keeping people healthy and yeah. teaching them how to swim? Well, we okay, let's start with the swimming. So we, we look at the swim programs um, differently. Mm -hmm. We look at, number one, if, if your child wants to participate or you want to participate as an adult and um, and you can't necessarily afford the program, we mm -hmm. financial we have financial assistance. Sure. So we don't we want anyone that wants to come in um, to enjoy swimming and learn to swim. Sure. We look at swimming as a life saving skill. Mm. We look at swimming as building confidence. Um, different things like that. So not only are we teaching you like the best strokes and how to stay afloat, but right. we look at it like as 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 the whole approach. Okay. You know, what other skills are you learning while you're either participating in the sure. swim classes or you're on the swim team? And so it's not just for children. There, and there it's are not adult just classes for children. Well. Oh, absolutely. And then we also have some senior citizen programs okay. too, where we have we have two pools. So we have an eight lane lap pool, mm -hmm. and then we also have a therapy pool and that therapy pool is kept at a higher temperature and we do a lot of arthritis okay. um, exercise programs, we do aquasize. Mm -hmm. Aquasize is probably our biggest uh, water uh, group X program. Right. We have about 40 women, probably of the ages over 65, that participate in that program wow. three times a week. Oh, that's excellent. And a lot of them we do. We have financial, financial aid for them. So mm -hmm. we just make sure that if you want to get healthy or stay healthy sure. or stay connected to a community, mm -hmm. which those women in that program are a community, yeah. that's something that the Y does. So talk about that community aspect. It's not just people who get together in swimming classes, but right. there are other ways that the Y helps build community. Right. Um, oh, that, great. <laughs> Thank you. That's a, that, <laughs> It, it's funny because when I was hired three and a half years ago, it was all about getting the message out about the services that we provide. Sure. So a lot of people were like, Irene, you've never run a gym before. Right. And I'm like, well, I'm not running a gym. I'm right. running a nonprofit. You have people for that. <laughs> yeah, I have people for that. No, I run a nonprofit. So my, the biggest um, part of my job is letting people know about the services, mm -hmm. engaging the community in what we do. So a lot of the programs that we have in place that we feel make the community better and strengthen mm -hmm. the community are programs like our teen program. So okay. we just, a year ago, hired a teen director. He, we started out with no program, we health and wellness program, but not, sure. not programming place for the kids to come. Mm -hmm. um, so our uh, teen director, Brad, has been working on that. We have a leaders club program now for middle school students. We have mm -hmm. 30 participants Excellent. now, which is great. So the kids come, you know, one day a week, and then they do community service projects yeah. all through the Y and through the guidance of, of, of this, Brad. Of Brad. Okay. And then there's other things that they do too. I mean, we do have some health and wellness programs for them too, mm -hmm. but we also have, because we're part of the YMCA Greater Boston, we have mm -hmm. access to unbelievable resources. So the kids go every summer, they can go out to the islands, okay. you know, free of charge, yeah. no charge to them. Yeah. We take kids to Celtics games. Mm -hmm. um, and again, just finding things for kids to do, having a teen director who is in his early 20s that can relate to the teens, sure. you know, just it, that pro those programmings are just starting to take off. And that's yeah. something I think we need to do a better job of letting people know sure. we, we have that sure. going on. We also, looking at the whole community, um, we had an option, the Burbank YMCA had an option, or I had an option, to put some programs in place for chronic illness. Oh, okay. um, so we run three programs right now. We mm -hmm. have, or uh, yeah, three programs. We have um, YDPP, which is Diabetes Prevention Program. Mm -hmm. um, that is a 12-week program. 
um, for the community members who may be pre-diabetic. Okay. So we have that program at RY. That was a decision that, mm -hmm. that I made with my board of advisors. We also have the pink and pink maintenance program. Okay. That's an exercise program for women recovering from breast cancer. Mm. So the pink program is when you're first trying to get back to exercise and right. we have uh, specific trainers who are trained in the fact of what that range of motion is and okay. what you can really expect out of someone recovering from cancer, sure. from surgery. Sure. Um, what could you actually expect out of them? How far to go? Wh what are milestones that they should be reaching? Okay. So we have that program. Once the participate participants graduate from that, we take them to the next level, right. which is called pink maintenance. We and pink maintenance so that we know that they've advanced a little bit more on their mm -hmm. health. Mm -hmm. Those programs are 100% no charge for women. Excellent. We get we get referrals from the local um, medical institutions okay. for those programs. Sure. And the last program that we have for chronic disease is um, Live Strong. Mm -hmm. So that's we just started that in 2015, and Live Strong is for any cancer survivor, male okay. or female. Again, that's a 12-week program. There's no charge to it. Um, and you come and you, you, you're you exercising with other people who are recovering from okay. cancers as well. So, so it's so really about kind of building your life back exactly. to where it was but prior to your diagnosis or prior to your surgery or something like exactly. that. Exactly. And the and it's hard. I mean, you, you, you've, taken, you've taken a big hit to your health. Sure. And the last place you want to the last thing you think about probably is walking into one of those you know fancy gyms right. where everyone is, is you know super fit yeah. or pumping 500 pounds yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we try to say that we provide a welcome sense of belonging okay. so you're in a program with others who may be going through the same thing that you're going through mm -hmm. um, and th the other option that we had at the Burbank Y is did we want to offer the program free to cancer survivors solely or okay. cancer survivors and their families ah, okay. and we made the decision to take the whole approach sure. to heal the whole family because even though it could be one person in your family that's ill cancer impacts everybody sure. Absolutely. so we made the decision to offer the membership and the programs to the entire family whether that's two mm -hmm. four six whatever's in your family and go through it together so the why becomes a place where right. the whole family can come they don't have to work out necessarily together but they're all there it's a place for them to go sure. and a place for them you know to feel good and accepted yeah. and start the healing process all over again absolutely and i know that um uh, along with those kind of programs are also programs that you've worked with in terms of helping those with disabilities get access absolutely to also absolutely in 2012 when i first took over we went through a major renovation mm -hmm. upstairs and all of our um, health and wellness equipment is ADA compliant. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud to say <laughs> that the Burbank Y is ADA compliant, sure. 100%. So we have specific machines that regardless of your a disability, we can move those in and out and okay. anyone, even so in even a wheelchair. Even someone in a wheelchair could, could work, work out. out on a machine yes. or something like that. Yeah. And then you go to our aquatics program and we have the same thing. We have a mm -hmm. lift that gets someone in and out of the water and then also our therapy pool has a ramp okay. and we have a water wheelchair that if we need to wheel somebody sure. down so the thing about the why is it's access for all mm -hmm. and what does that mean and what does for all mean it, regardless of your, of your disability regardless of your financial situation sure. we try to make everyone feel welcome and try to help everyone and that's how we see the why strengthening communities yeah excellent excellent so and you know there, there, you've talked about programs that help people with disabilities mm -hmm. and and uh, you've mentioned financial concern also yep. there what are the kinds of activities or or uh, programs as the Y sponsor to kind of help build the community uh, in the area well we haven't even touched on child development we haven't even talked about children yeah so my Y has preschool mm -hmm. and we have after school programs. Okay. We also operate three after school programs in North Reading as well. All right. So again, that's a way that we look at like helping families and children. Sure. Um, we try to close the achievement gap in the summer. So mm -hmm. our we run some summer camps as mm -hmm. well. So we have Camp Wakanda, which is a traditional day camp out on Stiles Pond in Boxford. Yep. That's a 25-acre camp, day camp. We bust the kids out there and bust them back. <laughs> they swim, they have canoes, there's archery, we have high and low ropes courses, yep. we have a field. 
um, for athletics, and we also have like a hard top for basketball. We have a Gaga pit, right. all that. Arts and crafts. Arts and all crafts. The traditional camp kind of stuff. Exactly, traditional day camp, outdoor camp, and the unique thing about the Y camps again, it's we scholarship families in. Okay. So we've had, and it's interesting, the last two summers we've had some um, really interesting um, needs that, you know, you look around our community and you, and you think, really, we have such a, a nice community, there's yeah. really a need out there, but um, there's certain nuances, um, single parents, parents mm. who are going through an illness, right. grandparents raising children, things like that you don't necessarily see, but those are the types of the families that we're trying to help. Sure. Um, so we scholarship their kids to camp. You know, we've had parents who are going through like divorce or an mm -hmm. illness mm -hmm. and things and just want to give the kids like a regular summer. Right. Get them away from the electronics. Yeah. Get them away from the TVs. Get them out in the traditional woods atmosphere and just, you know, just let them feel let like them. normal, like every other sure. kid. Let them forget what's going on at home. Yeah. So, and we do that either at Wakanda, we also have Camp Q in mm -hmm. Wakefield, and we have a, a day camp at, at the branch too. Okay. And, and that's, to me, that's another wonderful thing that we do, that we help youth development and, sure. and our, push our mission. And even those camps that are stay local that don't go up to Wakanda yeah. have things like swimming and, and, oh, and yeah. a lot of those other activities. Absolutely. So our camp that Wilbur that's at the branch, they swim in our pool. We sure. also have the splash park out back mm -hmm. and we take them to across to the fields across. Yep. So they're not just, just in, in the, the branch. Building, yeah. And then Camp Q that's in Wakefield, they go on one field trip a week. So okay. they've been everywhere. They've been to the Franklin Park Zoo. Right. You know, they've been to some museums. Mm -hmm. So one day a week, they they go, they get in a bus and they go. So we try to keep them really active. And again, because we are part of the YMCA Greater Boston, our resources are vast, and it allows right. the kids to you know to do pretty much anything all yeah. summer long. Well, it's been terrific uh, hearing about all this. I know there's a lot more we could talk about, but our oh, time I is... Oh, I keep going. I know you can keep <laughs> going. Um, so what I would recommend for people who are interested more about any of the programs we've talked about or about anything else that's going on at the Y is to contact the Y. Um, you can check out their website at uh, YMCA greaterboston.org slash Burbank, uh -huh. yep. um, or you can just drop in and take a tour and find out what's going on and find out about any of these programs and a whole lot more. Thank you. I would welcome anyone come in. I'd love to show them the why, show sure. them what's going on, um, and see how we're impacting the community in the most positive way. All right. Well, thank you, Irene. This thank has you, been Kevin. Irene Collins, the director of the Burbank YMCA, and we will be back in just a moment. Well, that's it for Community Conversation today. We thank you to Matt Cornellis and Irene Collins for appearing on our show. Be sure to look for future episodes. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Approaching from Lowell Street, I'm easily confused. The bright lights and the traffic are calling me to you. Reaching old yellow. Oh, should I?